Today we're covering high oleic oils, the things that you see on the ingredient label of just about every food on the shelf these days, and we're gonna cover whether they're good or bad. I'm gonna talk about what it actually means, I'm gonna give you a really fun analogy, and then I'm gonna talk about a little bit of the research to compare high oleic sunflower oil versus regular sunflower oil, et cetera, et cetera. But then I'm gonna give you some practical solutions and things that you can take away from this video so that when you go into the grocery store, you can know what to look for on the label rather than just guessing. So this video is gonna be simple, it's gonna be relatively short, and we're gonna have some fun with it. Hey, I do wanna make sure that you hit that red subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you never miss our daily videos. Yes, daily videos. And then after this video, check out Thrive Market down below in the description. They're an online healthy grocery store. So I've been able to assemble different packages and things like that for my fans and my viewers to be able to embrace and get delivered to their doorstep in terms of groceries. So check them out, online membership-based grocery store, but they're down below in the description after you finish watching this video. All right, so to understand this whole thing, we have to look at some labels, right? So when you walk into a grocery store and you look at a label, you look at like a prepackaged food that's seemingly healthy, and you see high oleic sunflower oil, or high oleic canola, or high oleic soybean oil. And you wonder, well, wait a minute, okay, what does that mean? Does it mean that it's healthy? Because oleic acid is actually a very good fat. It's a very good fat. So if it's high oleic, does that automatically make it good? Well, let me give you a little comparison, an analogy that's gonna put this into simple perspective. Let's say that you really like steak, but you hate fish. So you can't get the omega-3 benefit of fish, right? So you just miss out on it. But imagine if food scientists came up with a way to make it so that when you ate steak, you got a bunch of omega-3s. That way you could eat your steak and get all the benefits of fish without ever having to eat fish. It'd be pretty tempting, right? But of course, anyone with half a brain would start to consider, well, shoot, what the heck are they actually doing to these cows to make them produce omega-3s? Clearly it's unnatural. Yes, you get your omega-3s, but is it a healthy way of getting it? It's the exact same question you have to ask yourself with this kind of thing, right? In this case, we're taking oils that don't exactly have the best fatty acid profile, and we're extracting good portions of that, we're removing bad portions, to leave us with, well, potentially a healthy oil. But in the process of doing that, it's been hybridized and potentially very, very, very scientifically modified with toxins and different chemicals and different heating processes. That's the whole idea behind high oleic fats, right? Now, the reason that this is occurring is to make products more shelf stable. And it makes perfect sense. And I actually commend society for going this way because the alternative is hydrogenated trans fats, right? So basically what they're doing is they're taking an unstable fat and they're adding or removing the unstable portion, leaving the more stable portion. That means that it can stay on the shelf longer without oxidizing. So again, you ask yourself, well, would you rather have a fat that's going to oxidize and be toxic free that way? Or would you rather have a fat that's a little bit more stable, but might have some, uh, I don't know, scientific GMO skeletons in its closet, if you want to call it that. Let's look at the research. So there's a study that was published in Nature, Scientific Reports, took a look at four groups of mice. Yes, mice, so it's not necessarily totally translatable. But anyway, these four groups of mice had different levels of fats. Okay, one group had very low fat. The other group had 40% of their calories coming from coconut oil. The other group had 40% of their calories coming from soybean oil. And the other group had 40% of their calories coming from high oleic soybean oil. Well, at the end of the study, they found that both soybean groups, whether it was high oleic or not, ended up with fatty liver, they ended up with glucose intolerance, and they both ended up obese. So they both had basically cruddy outcomes. But what was wild was that the group that had the high oleic soybean oil had less overall weight gain. Okay, there was 30% weight gain with the high oleic soybean oil, 38% weight gain with the regular soybean oil. And just for a matter of mentioning it, only a 13% weight gain with saturated fat. How about that? Now I know you're thinking that's a mouse study, and I agree, okay? But various human studies have shown that there's pretty much no difference, right? There's pretty much, when they compare high oleic sunflower to regular sunflower, the results, overall health outcomes, about the same. Same with high oleic soybean versus regular soybean. Same with high oleic canola versus regular canola. Basically, no real difference except for the fact that the high oleic becomes more shelf stable. But as far as the health outcomes go, no real difference. So then we have to ask ourselves the question, okay, well, what if we compare high oleic oils to 
oils that are naturally high in oleic acid. Okay, for example, olive oil is like over 70% oleic acid. So it's naturally a high oleic oil, right? The problem is, is it's expensive and you can't really use it to be shelf stable for a long period of time. Anyhow, the British Journal of Nutrition published that olive oil has much more health properties than high oleic sunflower oil did. Okay, well that tells us right then and there that the high oleic sunflower oil it doesn't matter that it's high oleic. The olive oil has the supporting antioxidants to actually allow that high oleic to truly do its job. Now you might be wondering, is this video anti-oleic or is it pro-high oleic? It's kind of neither, but what I need to have you understand when you go into the grocery store, and here's your sort of practical tips, is that you still have to look at high oleic oils as what they are. And what I mean by that is simply this. If it's a soybean oil, it's a soybean oil, even if it's high oleic. High oleic doesn't magically make the soybean oil good. Okay, all it does is essentially make it more stable. What it's doing in our body from a health perspective, we honestly don't fully know. Okay, the same kind of thing with sunflower oil. If it's sunflower oil or high oleic sunflower oil, it's still on the same hierarchy of oils. Okay? And lastly, the same with canola versus high oleic canola. So what is better? Well, then we just have to translate that over to, well, if we took high oleic out of the equation altogether, what would be best? Well, that particular ranking is going to be sunflower oil, followed by canola oil, followed by soybean oil. So that's the order. Okay? If you see high oleic sunflower oil, it's not terrible, because sunflower oil isn't terrible. Okay? But if you see high oleic canola, it's no better than regular canola. And if you see high oleic soybean oil, run for the hills because it's just as bad as regular soybean oil. Okay. And one last thing before I let you go that's important to note is that a lot of these studies look at people that are doing standard American diets, which means that the overall fat that they're consuming is actually a small amount. As you get to be on like a ketogenic diet or possibly just an even low carb, higher fat diet, this plays a bigger role because a larger portion of your overall calories is now coming from fat. So the potential drawbacks and potential benefits are much greater if you're on a low carb diet because your fat intake is so much higher. Your impact eating 40, 50% of your calories from fat is going to be much more powerful than someone that's getting 10% of their calories from fat. This is a simple volume game. Anyhow, make sure you keep it locked in and I'll see you tomorrow.